Hey guys, here we go. We're going to be doing a new film study. Uh, first, I'd like to say that Showtime owns all the rights to the video. My use of this is protected under the Fair Act use for commentary, scrutiny, uh, and educational purposes, a, and creating a new and um, unique uh, interpretation of what we're going to be watching. Um, so thank you. Um, the, the Gennady Golovkin stuff kind of got picked up by some copyright stuff. So I'll have to wait and battle that out before I put any more videos. I don't want to put any more videos I'm gonna get that are all going to get picked up under the same copyright. Um, and just waste my time putting the videos out because they might just all get taken down right away. Um, but before the rematch, I'll be able to go over the videos again and uh, talk about specific techniques and look at the, the game plans that the fighters had and kind of talk about... Um, keys to victory for the next fight and I can have a much more enjoyable series on that um, that I'll do before because obviously I'm going to be insanely excited about that fight. Uh, it's right around the time that my birthday is and I never do anything but watch boxing on my birthday so I'll be amped up for that shit for real. And um, anyway um, so we're going to get into Guillermo Rigondeaux versus Vasily Lomachenko um, Vasily Lomachenko in my opinion is He's the most complete fighter in all of boxing. He knows how to counter. He knows how to move forward. He knows how to fight in every style. And he has an amazing craft. You know, now most people don't know what boxing craft really is. You know, maybe I don't know what the fuck boxing craft is. But my interpretation is having a style, having like a game plan for each of your fights, you know, that you that you kind of try to administer on your opponent. And then the ways that you're, and that any... Every single way that your opponent can counter, can take away your craft, you have trained, right, to take away those those counters to it. So, like, if you want to get on the inside, one of the best weapons against that is the jab, right? So you have five different ways to take the jab away from your opponent so you can continue doing what you want to do, and that's craft. You build an entire strategy, and then you build subset strategies based on how your opponent attacks your craft. Right, and that's one thing you know. Around the time that I did, uh, oh god, I'm gonna get on a tangent real quick. But um, when I did my first set of videos, I did it on Golovkin Jacobs, and on the undercard there was a very quote unquote controversial fight um, with Roman uh, Chocolatito Gonzalez versus I'm not even gonna say that boy's name, but um, I thought that Chocolatito gave the fight away. You know, he would come on, you know, strong at the end of the round, but he didn't have a way to get around um, um, that guy's jab. You know, he didn't know how to get around it. And that's, a, that's an integral part of having, having a good craft. You know, if you can get on the inside and do all the shit that you want to do, that's great. That's a style, right? But having real craft is having answers to all the things that take away your craft. And that's what, exactly what that guy did. Um, and I didn't want to pick against him in the rematch. That's why I didn't do any videos on it. Because to be honest, I was going to pick that guy to beat him. And I even did think that there was a chance he could get knocked out. You know, after rewatching the fight and just being like, you know. Anyway, it, it just didn't look like Chocolatito had the greatest craft. You know, but I love watching him fight. And I would still continue watching him fight even after his loss. Uh, after moving up in weight, like I don't know how many divisions or whatever. He's still a very fun fighter to watch. But anyway, um... We're going to see, like, real craft with Vasily Lomachenko. Um, and then we're going to take a look at Guillermo Rigondeaux. And we're, what we're going to be doing is this is going to be very different. For those of you that are new to the channel, um, and thank you, everybody, who's been leaving comments and who's been uh, subscribing. I really appreciate the support. Uh, I really appreciate that people enjoy um, listening to my voice. I've heard it before, and I hate it. I hate the sound of my voice. I think I sound, I think I sound like a little kid. And... Um, but anyway, <laughs> um, but the people that leave comments and that are interested, genuinely interested in boxing, I really appreciate it. Um, but uh, we're going to go ahead and get into, oh, what the fuck I was going to say? Oh yes, this is going to be a much different film study because we're going to be talking about, we're going to be talking about actual boxing skills, you know. Um, Golovkin versus Canelo film study was not a skills uh, breakdown. It wasn't a skills film study, right? And you can film study like, you know, it, film study is just studying the film. Whatever you're trying to find, like the, whatever your goal is, that's what, that's what you're studying. You know, we were studying game plans, shifts in momentum, um, what was changing from one round to the other, uh, so that we could figure out, you know, why in the middle rounds, 
Canelo kind of went on his bike. Uh, and, and in my opinion, that by the end of the fourth round, it just seemed that Golovkin had figured Canelo out, in my opinion. You know, I get a lot of, like, people saying, oh, Canelo worked him, he did this, he was doing, you know. But to be honest, he could only kind of really explode out of his guard by the end of the fight um, and hope to land. You know, Golovkin had pretty successfully taken away his jab, stopped him from really being able to set up his punches by the end of the fourth round. And I don't think that Canelo really knew where to go from there, um, and he just wasn't nearly as successful um, toward the end of the fight. Even though he did wind up landing several big punches, um, uh, Golovkin was the one that was actually outboxing and out-neutralizing Canelo, and that was the reason for him getting on his bicycle and not fighting, was because he was looking for opportunities, trying to find opportunities to walk Golovkin into punches, because um, he was just getting outfought. Uh, but anyway, that's my opinion. Um, when when copyright stuff settles down, we'll go over that more. But we're going to get into this fight, and I'm not sure how many rounds we're going to do because Guillermo Rigondeau, um, he doesn't have very many fights against Southpaws, you know, and this is a Southpaw versus Southpaw match, and it's very important to figure out how, what kind of skills each fighter uses against, you know, the like-minded fighters or like-style fighters, you know, someone that they're going to be fighting as well. So anyway, without further ado, we're going to go ahead and get into the round. And just breaking down skills. So right away, um, Gary Russell Jr. gives like a slight feint with his left hand and then shoots the jab. Um, and by the way, also, I might mix up the left hand and right hand uh, quite a few times just simply because of the fact that they're both uh, southpaws. So it may look to my eyes that they're fighting in an orthodox style, you know, because they're not mirrored. Um, don't roast me too much about it. So right away... Gary Russell Jr. is trying to establish his jab. Like any good boxer, you want to establish your jab. Having control of your opponent, right, everyone knows why that's good. You, like Just like in the Golovkin-Canelo fight, Canelo wasn't able to establish his jab. Golovkin was establishing his and taking Canelo's away by the middle rounds. Um, and that allowed him control of the distance between them. So right away... Vasily Lomachenko showing that he's good at slipping punches. He's able to slip and starts countering right away to try and take Gary Russell Jr.'s jab away to stop it from being effective. So, so far, slipping punches, seeing the punches coming, and countering. Um, now, this is really interesting. This is one thing that I love about him. See how he takes that little dip right there? This is the same thing as if you're fainting your opponent, right? It's the same thing as putting your probe out there. Everything that you do that you want your opponent to react to or you're looking for their reaction, right? Fainting, probing, um, you know, stepping forward. Everything that you, you're doing and you get a look at your opponent, it's all the same. It all has the same effectiveness. And you want to do that stuff to kind of test their, um, test what they're going to do, how they react, right? And he sees, oh, uh, Gary Russell's not doing anything. So what does he do right off of that? He gives him a tiny one and he's like, oh, I'll give him another one. In the middle of that, giving him a little feint, you know, like a little probe, not a feint, a probe, right? Just controlling the distance, making sure that while he's setting up, while he's looking at Gary Russell Jr., Gary Russell Jr. doesn't throw punches at him, right? So he just flashes his lead hand and then gives him another dip right there, right? And then gives him another dip or another probing shot right here. And then again, Gary Russell shoots the jab, right? And now, interesting... Um... Sorry, got distracted. I lost my train of thought for a second. So he shoots the jab, and he slips to the inside. You know, normally a fighter would slip to the outside. You know, they wouldn't slip to the inside of the jab unless they were throwing a punch. But Vasily Lomachenko is a very crafty fighter, and we'll see why in a little bit. But it shoots to the inside. And now, this is really interesting. So he takes a shot. Now look, he's moving, he's slipping before the punch even comes. You know, now, I, I watched this round once already. Uh, but I haven't been able to figure out whether or not um, he has a tell already from Gary Russell Jr. I haven't been able to pick pick it out. Like, if we watch this, like, ten times, what is the lean back, lean forward, lean forward, and he shoots it off of the jab. So let's go back and look at this other jab that he shot. Lean back, lean forward, lean back, lean forward, lean back, lean forward, lean back. And he leans forward, and as he leans forward, as he steps with his jab, maybe it's he's stepping with his jab. And that's what it is. So maybe maybe Gary Russell Jr. is stepping with his jab, and that's the timing right here that uh, Vasily Lomachenko is picking up on. It's a very common um, 
And it's a very tiny step, right? But it's a very common thing to learn uh, when you're boxing. I think Golovkin does it a little bit too, right? It's not as pronounced as uh, Canelo's is, right? Where he leans all the way on his foot and leans forward, right? Um, but you can see right here that Vasily Lomachenko is moving before the punch even comes, right? And that's what you call an, like having an active guard, right? It doesn't even matter whether the punch is coming. He's He's got an active guard. He's fainting. He's probing. He's moving his hands. He's getting looks at you. He's not just stale, right? And that's one of the things that I don't like about, uh, like, um, that I would have criticized both Canelo and Triple G in their fight is they had kind of, like, uh, stale guards, especially Golovkin in the in the early rounds where he was just looking to abuse that timing. Um, he he wasn't really moving his hands, moving you know, rolling you know, without punches. That's what you call like head movement, right? On a, at a most basic level, you're just like, oh, that's head movement. You know, head movement is not just sl head movement is not slipping punches, right? Head movement that's called slipping punches, right? If if your opponent has to throw punches at you to get you to move your head, you don't have head movement. You're just good at slipping punches if it works, right? And sometimes your opponent's going to be able to, you know, catch you off guard and you're just going to get hit by a hit by a punch. Like Errol Spence has this problem that he has no head movement, right? He His head is basically always in the same spot as, uh, when he's not punching. Sometimes he punches and he moves his head, but for the most part, his, his head is very stationary. Um, and that's something right here that... Um, Vasily Lomachenko, if you look at, like right here, slipping, right? Slipping, rolling, an active guard. It's very, very, very important, especially fighting someone as um, fast, right? Fast and hard-hitting as a fighter like Gary Russell Jr. or Guillermo Rigondo. So, you know, he gets points for that, having an active guard. And that's something that I look for in my film studies. Uh, and right here, just being mindful, he doesn't even know whether Gary Russell's going to throw a punch right there. He's already slipping. Even though it might be looking like it's on his timing, he's already slipping when the punch is coming. Very important. And what does he notice right after that? Slips, and then Gary Russell Jr. throws another punch. So picking up on patterns, and we'll see what he does with that. So here he is again. Again, uh, active guard, right? His head is never in the same position. His hands aren't in the same position. Probing, catching the shot. And then responsible defense, right? He sees the jab and then gets his glove up to catch the, the possible straight left from Gary Russell. Very responsible defense so far and very active guard. Now, real quick, just to demonstrate the active guard principle that I'm talking about, let's watch Gary Russell Jr., right? He's not doing anything. If you notice... His, his guard is very stale. He's not really moving. Oh, this is beautiful, though. But, but he's not... And that's why he's going to be so easy to hit during the course of this fight. And that's one of the reasons why um, Vasily Lomachenko has such great uh, success in this fight. is because Gary Russell Jr.'s head is always in the same spot. Sure, he slips punches well, and he has like a decent amount of defense, um, like any great amateur. I think he had like almost 400 amateur fights as well. Um, I have no idea what that number actually is, but I know it's in the hundreds. He fought in the Olympics twice, I think. Um, but a very talented fighter. Like, don't get me wrong about Gary Russell Jr. Fuck! Fucking 13 and a half minutes. I'm only 20 seconds into the video. My bad, y'all. So, I'll try to speed it up a little bit. Um, so, again, active guard, right? Boom. And he's already slipping even before Gary Russell throws his punch. Slips the shot. And, again, looking to take away Gary Russell's... Um, Gary Russell's jab by countering, you know, and I think that he thought that Gary Russell was going to move more off the line. I'm not sure what this punch was even supposed to be from Vasily Lomachenko, uh, but this is beautiful. This is absolutely beautiful. After he shoots, he misses that shot. They both come back up to the line and they look at each other and then immediately they duck because they're on that rhythm that they're punching um, and they're both on the line and when they both come up, they're both susceptible to a shot right there. Um, and it's really important for your responsible defense that you never come up in the same spot like that and stay there. Um, I tried to do some film study on Jeff Horn for Pacquiao. Um, and there's like a highlight that I saw of Jeff Horn. And he knocked some guy out in the first round. And I can't remember the guy's name. But Jeff Horn throws a combination. And then the guy slips all the punches. And then the guy comes up. 
in the same spot. He comes straight up. He doesn't move off the line. He doesn't have a responsible defense after missing all the, after making and miss all those punches. And then as soon as he comes up, Jeff Horn just throws one more punch, completely off timing and everything. You know, like not part of that real com- that same uh, combination, and hits the guy because the guy just comes up on the line in the same spot and gets knocked out. You know, uh, that's what you call like having a very poor. Uh, responsible defense um, and as you can see both of these fighters have a good responsible defense right there so again look at how active he is right here he's not punching he's not doing anything he's not um, but it doesn't look like he's doing anything you know a lot of fighters like if they'll they'll look at this guy and be like oh he's just wasting all that movement he's just you know he's not doing anything but what he's he's doing other things he's setting a precedent right he's sitting here he's moving he's rolling right moving in and he's gauging what what um gary russell jr's reactions are and he's getting gary russell jr used to seeing these movements because these are traps he's setting traps with these small movements and we'll kind of get into it uh later but anyway moving in moves down ducks right and then beautiful right after that gary russell moves off the line which he's very good at and then uh, Lomachenko moves off the line as well, resets, and then comes back in, and then beautiful, right? So rather than slipping to the inside again, he slips to the outside, right? And then comes over the top with a straight left hand that almost completely wrecks Gary Russell Jr. But Gary Russell Jr., if you look at him when he, where he is right here, he's basically like uh, perpendicular to the ropes, the ones that we can see, right? And when he shoots, he moves completely off the line, right? At an angle, and he's able to get away from that shot. Beautiful from both fighters, right? And then Vasily Lomachenko, you can kind of see some of the traps that he's setting. He set a precedent right there for slipping to the inside, slipping to the inside, and then made Gary Russell Jr. think he was going to slip to the inside, slip to the outside, and threw the left hand over the top. Uh, and that, you know, in my opinion, most of the time, that would have worked. You know, Gary Russell Jr. wasn't moving off the line so well. It would have been a great shot, um, especially because Gary Russell Jr. is in 30 seconds. He's already set a precedent for shooting multiple jabs. Oh, come on, video. Don't do this to me. Some good feints from him, right? Great active guard moving in, moving down. Oh, beautiful work right there. Look at Now, look at all the work that goes into Vasily Lomachenko landing that one body shot right there. So here he is, feints changes levels right now someone in the um in the comment section of another video the the canelo one uh they said that canelo was changing levels right and i think that this and what canelo was doing was um they're completely different right so canelo would be moving in and put, bringing his guard with him uh but not in a position to punch right so it's not really a level change he's just trying to get canelo or he was just trying to get golovkin to shoot a punch at him while he would move that movement so that he could just pull back, right? Or so that he could counter, right? But he's not changing levels so that he could throw a body shot, right? That's not the intention that he has. And it's fundamentally different because he's no longer under his legs. He's not in a position to punch. But so he moves down and very smart from Gary Russell Jr., right? When he changes levels, he takes a step back because he's not in a position to block a body shot. Look how high his guard is. So then he dips to the inside, flashes him a feint, right? Changes level, Gary Russell Jr. Whoops, oh, come on, video. Let me talk about boxing VLC. Give me a break. Oh, man. It's the slow-mo on this stuff, man. It really it really wrecks the file as I'm trying to, um, or the frame by frame. Whoa, ah! Okay, so flashes him the feint, gets him to bring his guard down, flashes him the feint again, changes levels, and then gets Gary Russell Jr. to change levels with him, finally. So he moves in. After he gets Gary Russell Jr. to change levels, he moves in, controls him, right, and then shoots that body shot. All of that work just so that he could move in and land that body shot. Beautiful boxing. And then Gary Russell Jr. trying to set up his own body shot, but he kind of looks, I don't know, look at his guard, man. Like, when I used to watch, there was this kid in my, um, in my middle school. He's, I hated that people called me a hillbilly because I'm white, you know? Like, little kids are mean, right? But they would call me, like, a hillbilly and, like, white trash or whatever. But there was actually this kind of hillbilly white trash, like, redneck fighter. And whenever he would fight with somebody, like, you'd see him, his arms were always super wide like this, like Gary Russell Jr. like this. His elbows would be kind of, like, pointed at his opponent, you know, when he would fight. But it was just always, it always cracked me up to see that guy. 
Um, I don't remember what his name was, but he's actually he's a cool dude. But uh, I thought there was a feint off of that. But um, anyway, telegraphing his shot right there. Ooh. So he misses the shot. And then Lomachenko tries to control him right here as he's coming up, right? But he lets him come up when he comes in off of that feint and then eats a shot right there. Now, this is something that I think that Vasily Lomachenko has kind of fixed. Usually when his opponents duck down like this, kind of below the waist, you know, real low like that, um, he puts both of his arms on top of their head and doesn't let them come up. You know, number one, it's dangerous, right? If he comes straight up with, a, with his head like that, he might just smash his head into Vasily Lomachenko's head, just like it looks like it almost happens right here. Um, but, uh, so he won't have to worry about that, you know, against Rigondo. Um, although he might get warned for it, it'll be something that Rigondo has kind of um, pointed out. You know, it's very obvious. But Vasily Lomachenko never throws punches when he's holding their head down, you know. He just does it because to get kind of away from that, like... Um, that danger, you know, something he probably learned in the Salido fight. But um, beautiful right here. Slips the shot. And now, um, again, Gary Russell Jr. not really tell, not really setting his punches up. He kind of just throws and explodes out of his guard. And Vasily Lomachenko is able to slip the shot and then pivot and change angles, right, and move off the line. And Gary Russell Jr. is not really allowed to land any shots right there. Uh, good stuff from Vasily Lomachenko. Um, and Gary Russell Jr. as well for landing the first hook back there. But um, again, back to that very interesting slip to the inside. And we're going to see more of why he does that. Again, slipping to the inside. And what it's doing, it's taking away Gary Russell Jr.'s confidence in throwing his jab, right? Gary Russell Jr. doesn't really land anything there either. But beautiful. Again, slips to the inside off of his jab turns away from it, and then moves off the line so that Gary Russell can't really throw combinations. I don't think that uh, Guillermo Rigondeau is a combination puncher. I think that he, f he fights uh, in a very intelligent way. Um, and combination punching, in my opinion, is, very, is just a very dangerous style to fight in. Um, those kind of fighters generally do wind up getting countered a lot. Um, but anyway, moving on. Again, beautiful. Getting to the inside, moving... Rolling, good head movement, right? Catching the jab. Fainting, slipping to the inside, slipping, changing, <laughs> slipping, faint, probing, slipping, slipping. Just so much stuff going on and beautiful, right? When the punch does finally come, he slips to the outside, right? And then moves off the line, doesn't come back in the same spot. Very responsible defense. He knows where he is in the ring at all times. Uh, they both kind of catch a jab right there from each other. Boom. Beautiful. I feel like I missed something. Maybe it just didn't happen yet. Okay, so this is fucking beautiful, you guys. And now we finally get to see what Vasily Lomachenko is setting up. Notice that when he slips to the inside right here, right? Slips to the inside. Slips to the outside. And then goes to the slip to the inside again. Oh, but he throws a right hand with it. And barely misses. But look at how the movement is exactly the same. It's exactly the same as when he just slips to the inside. So he's looking to, as part of his craft, he's looking to disguise his right hands as, as just slipping on the inside by getting you used to seeing that technique. Beautiful boxing from him. Very, very, very intelligent. Oh, oh, shit, he fucking got him. So this is beautiful. Right here, beautiful boxing. So breaking it down, slips to the inside, right? Gary Russell Jr., oh, shit, is he throwing a right hand? What is he doing? Why is he doing that? I can't really throw a jab right here. Slips to the inside, then he throws a jab from that spot, eliciting a counter from... Um, from Gary Russell Jr., slipping that as well. And now what usually happens off of this? Vasily Lomachenko actually throws his own jab as well, right? Um, and he knows that Gary Russell Jr. from this position likes to catch the jab. So what does Gary Russell Jr. do? He moves his glove in front of his face to catch a counter jab. And Vasily Lomachenko comes in with a hook instead. Boom, and just cracks him. Uh, beautiful boxing. 
perfectly set up shot. Even though Gary Russell Jr. has complete control over Lomachenko's head, he just has no idea that the hook is coming uh, because he's only seen jabs before. You know, maybe Gary Russell Jr. will be a little bit better at defending against that now that he knows that that's part of it. But again, slipping and and Gary Russell Jr. doesn't know now, right? If he's if when Vasily Lomachenko moves in, if he's allowed to even throw another jab to kind of control Vasily Lomachenko, because Lomachenko off of this style of fighting has started to create craft, right? Now this is what you call craft. Um, he's he's he has a game plan. He knows where he wants to be, right? He wants to be slipping on the inside to land his punches, right? Getting a positional advantage on his opponent, a very slight one, right? But his opponent has so many tools to take that ability away from him. So one of the tools that Gary Russell Jr. shows is the jab. So what does he do? He starts setting traps for the jab when he's on that movement. Boom, slip inside, slip inside. He's about to fake slip inside, baits the jab, slips to the outside, throws one over the top. Right? Then he slips inside, slips inside, and while he's slipping, he throws a right hand, right? Switching it up and, and looking for ways to take away Gary Russell Jr.'s confidence in his jab so that he's more able to just move inside and take the position that he wants. Shooting the jab, and now this is interesting. Gary Russell Jr. kind of faints to the body, you know? And if you look at this, what does this even look like, right? Does that look like anything? Not really, but he does wind up landing a, a great uh, body shot because of it. So Vasily Lomachenko comes in, gives him the head movement, gives him the roll, flashes him the jab, and Gary Russell Jr. slips the jab and throws a hook to the body. And I think that Lomachenko read it as a hook to the head in spite of the fact that um, Gary Russell Jr. did that little dip right there. Um, I'm not sure exactly, like where he learned to slip punches like that or like rolls or like, you know, but that's one of the problems with having like an unorthodox kind of technique like that, or I guess like it works out for him in this situation. Um, but he's not really able to mask his, his punch or his technique as a roll or a slip or anything. Um, like Vasily Lomachenko is, uh, but it winds up working out in his favor, even though the punch is telegraphed. Um, Lomachenko just doesn't pick that it's a, a body shot versus the head shot. Um, and I think he lands his own body shot there too. Maybe not. It's not important whether he does or not. No, he doesn't. He misses like a, like a wild man. But really interesting stuff again. Good head movement, right? He's able to slip that shot while he's moving off the line. Oh my god, I just love watching this guy shoot. Shoots the jab. Oh, is there a counter coming? He faints in, changes levels. Just so much static defense off of just having an active guard, right? Slipping punches, boom, and walks him into that shot. Gary Russell Jr., you know, very good fighter as well, right? Controls his head and then almost lands that shot. Beautiful. I guess I got to break that down a little better. But um, starts stepping. Slips the, I think that's a left hand from him, to the inside. And then beautiful work from Vasily Lomachenko. As Gary Russell Jr. is coming in, he controls him with his forehead to keep him from bodying up with him and tries to land that, that right hook over the top. But Gary Russell Jr. ducks it. You know, I think he ducks a little too low, you know, technically, you know, for the rules. But immediately, Vasily Lomachenko controls him, right, and tries to get his forearms on him to stop him from coming up not only with his head, right, like he did before, he might, like, smash him into his jaw, right? Make Vasily Lomachenko bite his own goddamn tongue off. But uh, Gary Russell Jr., you know, a good sport right there. and doesn't actually throw punches, so. Ooh, so here he is. Shoots the jab. Looks to counter a possible um, over-the-top punch or maybe another jab from, um, from um, Gary Russell. Why do I keep forgetting that guy's name? And then this is beautiful. They both miss their jabs. Vasily Lomachenko slips to the inside, and Gary Russell Jr. doesn't see anything wrong with it. He's like, okay, cool, I'll just keep moving off the line. But what does Vasily Lomachenko do from that position? Throws a great body shot. It does get mostly blocked from Gary Russell Jr., but Gary Russell Jr. has no idea what's coming from, uh, from that inside slip because he hasn't seen it before, right? Again... Vasily Lomachenko with real craft. He has a 
strategy, a game plan. He knows where he wants to be. He wants to be slipping to the inside, throwing the, the straight left over the top, and then it looks to be throwing right hooks to the body. Uh, and he has ways to take away Gary Russell Jr.'s jab that's going to prevent him from doing that uh, to get on the inside. Again, beautiful boxing. Slips to the inside, flashes the one, throws the two, and then, throw, and then lands the right hook um, while he's in there. You know, and it's very interesting. It, actually, maybe he doesn't even land the left hook or the right hook. Nah, it looks like pretty clearly landed. Um, but Gary Russell Jr., at this point, you know, he shouldn't be standing on the line with Vasily Lomachenko once he's in there. Great feints again. Fainting, dipping to the inside, fainting. Gary Russell Jr. thinks a jab is coming. He gets him out of position. Gary Russell shoot is he shooting a jab? I can't even tell. The angle's like kind of bad. Yeah, trying to control him with the jab. And then beautiful. So now it looks like Vasily Lomachenko saw that he threw the jab and expects a jab coming and slips it, baiting him into throwing the jab to so he can land the straight left hand. Um, but both of them can kind of see those punches coming. They expect it. Um, not see it coming or expect it, but like responsible defense, right? But great trap setting from Lomachenko in this regard. Shooting the jab at Gary Russell's guard, slipping to the inside. And then Gary Russell, sorry, reading a text, guys. My bad. <laughs> oh, man, beautiful. So steps to the inside. Gary Russell Jr. raises his hands. I don't know if he thinks a right hand might be coming. I'm not sure exactly why he's doing that, right, what he's trying to accomplish. But he's not really reacting anymore, right? He can't control him with the jab so far. He can't keep him outside with the jab because he's slipping the punches so well. He doesn't know if a right hand is coming over the top, if he does throw the jab. So what, is, what does he do? He gets on the inside like that and lands his own jab. Beautiful boxing, you guys. Beautiful. Boom. Slipping the jab to the outside this time, countering with the jab. And he just has so many different avenues to take away the jab, right? Slipping to the inside, slipping to the outside, countering with the jab. Slipping to the outside with the right hand. Um, and just catching the jab and shooting his own jab. You know, just beautiful boxing from Lomachenko. Now, nothing really happens here. Oh, man. But they're, but Gary Russell Jr. is so damn fast. <laughs> so rolls in. Ooh, I think that Gary Russell Jr. was expecting Lomachenko to slip to the inside and kind of land that straight left hand, which would have been a great shot. And then Vasily Lomachenko actually probably expects Gary Russell Jr. to move off the line and misses his own left hand. Very great, like great boxing from both of them. But neither one of them really landing cleanly right there. And again, just beautiful boxing. Slipping the shot. And one thing that you notice from Gary Russell Jr., he's not setting his punches up. You know, he just kind of explodes out of his guard. Um... And that's one of the reasons why he doesn't have any success, you know. All the things that Lomachenko does to set his punches up, that, that his jabs, slipping to the inside, slipping to the outside, right? He's so unpredictable, and that it makes his offense so effective. Uh, whereas Gary Russell Jr., you know, he landed a couple decent shots in this round, um, some good jabs, a good body shot a good, uh, with the right hook, a good right hook to the head while Lomachenko was trying to control his head. Um, but... But not really having as nearly as much success as Lomachenko, who's putting in a lot of work to land his shots. Now, catching the jab, slipping to the outside of the jab, right? Ducking, coming over the top with the right hand. Beautiful. Set the, and he's been setting this up all around, right? And then steps forward, shifting forward. Beautiful. Lands a left hand. A right hand, <laughs> and then another left hand over the top. Uh, it doesn't look like that third one lands very cleanly. Um, but just beautiful boxing, right? Just beautiful boxing, setting up his shots, making it so that he's unpredictable, and uh, landing just, just beautiful boxing. 
you know, oh man, and then he finally gets on the inside, changing levels, controlling him, right, with the lead hand, Gary Russell Jr. reacting, Gary Russell thinks it's a right hand, because of the fact that Lomachenko moves with this on the same axis when he throws his right hand, or left hand, his straight left hand, as he does when he slips a punch, right? So he doesn't throw the punch, he just slips to the inside, Gary Russell Jr. reacts like it's a right hand because Lomachenko is so damn good, and because he's slipping a right a left hand, he's in he's out of position and he eats a body shot, and then another body shot. Beautiful work from from Vasily Lomachenko. Just this guy is a master, you guys. And look at this is in the first round, you guys. He's gotten all this work done in the first round. Just beautiful boxing. Again, more taking away of. Uh, Gary Russell's jab slipping even though he doesn't land the shot right he's using those tools to take them away oh man beautiful slips to the inside right again Gary Russell has no idea what he's going to do he knows he can't stay there right so he takes a small step back because he can't stay there because a body shot might come the overhand left might come and and Lomachenko is able to occupy him right whoops shuffle forward with the jab, not a real jab, but just occupying his guard. Gary Russell reads it as a right hand, or a straight left hand over the top. And Lomachenko goes to the body right there. Beautiful shot, beautifully set up. Um, boom. Controls him with his forearm right there. Boom. Comes back with a, with a left a left hook <laughs> uh, that he misses, and he kind of gets whacked in the head as Gary Russell Jr. turns with it beautifully. Again, Gary Russell Jr., is he's no slouch. This guy's a very good fighter. He's very good. He's very talented. Um, he's, like, probably one of the best, like, C-level boxers. And I have a very different grading scale than most people, so don't think that I am looking down on him by calling him a C-level fighter. Um... If you haven't seen those videos, if you're new to the channel, like the grading the video fighters, um, um, C-level fighters are just very, they're technically sound, you know, they're, they're world champion, world class fighters, they're fighters that don't really set up their punches, they don't really have, um, or they use very basic feints to set their punches up, they don't have like the great tools for controlling their opponent when they're out of position or when they punch. Um, like Mayweather, a lot of times he'll throw a right hand and then he'll control you with his forearm and push on you to create space, right? Um, or as you've seen in this fight, Vasily Lomachenko has the probing, right? The slipping to the inside, slipping to the outside, the fake jab, you know, the probing jab where he's just like, duh, duh, what are you going to do? You know, that's called probing, you know, and he does it not just with his lead hand, not even just with his cross, right? His left hand, his back hand, but he does it with his head movement, right? With his slips on the inside, slips on the outside. That's all probing, right? Getting, Trying to get his opponent out of position before he commits to a shot, you know? Now, any fighter that has even one of those skills, right? Defensive or offensive makes it into the B category. Um, and a fighter that has both skills, in my opinion, makes it into my A category. Um, and I give Vasily Lomachenko an A level. Uh, even though in this instance, you know, he's not really utilizing that control super well. He does occupy him very well right there. Control him with the forearm to set up this left hook. Uh, and even though he does miss it, um, Gary Russell Jr., again, very good fighter. Um, he's not controlling him because he's punching at the moment. Um, he could have done probably a little more. I don't know. To be honest, I was probably very perfectly timed from uh, Gary Russell Jr. Uh, but what does he do immediately? Slips back, gets away from the follow-up shot from uh, Gary Russell Jr., and then pivots off the line so that he can reset so that he's no longer in danger. Beautiful boxing. Even though he kind of gets raked with that, that hand right there. Slip, slip. Very active defense, right? A very active guard. Stops Gary. Now, Gary Russell, look at... What has Gary Russell done in this round, right? He's thrown a couple jabs and a couple counters when Vasily Lomachenko has come inside. Uh, and a couple body shots that he's thrown. He's landed one of them or two of them. Um, but he hasn't really done anything. He hasn't come forward at all. He hasn't really... Uh, been the one to open up exchanges. And that's because he doesn't know how to get control of the distance between them, right? Vasily Lomachenko has all that control with this head movement. He has all that control with this feint, right? Look at how beautiful this is, right? Gives him a feint, right? Changes levels, 
right? Gary Russell Jr. has no idea what's coming, so he can't react to it because he doesn't know. Because if he reacts to it in the wrong way, he's going to eat a big counter, right? Faint, faint, and then almost eats a huge punch, right? Boom, faint, probing jab right here. And Gary Russell Jr. goes to touch the jab, right? And Lomachenko tries to catch him with the, with the right hook. Beautiful boxing. Even though it doesn't land, right? Um, setting up his punches with his probes. You know, and that's instantly just gets you into my, my B category for setting up your punches. Um, just great boxing from Lomachenko. Again, now this is responsible defense. Shoots the jab. Slips a shot. Boom. And then controls him on the way out. Right? Boom. Jab. Controls him on the way out with his jab. Right? That's And that, that's like... Uh, high level defense, right? Even though it's not like a conventional defense where you're slipping and rolling punches and, you know, it's not looking super flashy. This simple movement makes Gary Russell Jr. think another punch is coming all while he just resets. He moves out to the outside so he's no longer in danger. And that's another form of like active defense, right? There's like a static defense, right? And then there's like your proactive defense. Oh, beautiful. Gary, he, they both kind of think that they're going to punch, right? And this is exactly what Canelo was doing to um, Golovkin. And this is why it's not just level changing, right? What Gary Russell Jr. is doing here. And he winds up completely out of position when he does it and kind of eats a two-piece. I think he blocks both, both of those punches. But he's not really in position to counter or land punches off of that movement. Oh, man. Lomachenko gets a little carried away after hearing that 10-second timer. Ooh, and eats this left hook on the inside, or right hook on the inside. But good work from him. Faint, faint, faint to the body, right? And then comes up top with the right hook, and he just misses and eats his own shot. But Gary Russell Jr. kind of looking for speed over power and not really able to get any power into his shot and make Lomachenko pay for that. But just what a great round. And in the first round... Like, when you think about boxing, like, a lot of people think, like, like, if you watched Lomachenko shadow boxing side by side with Canelo, right, people would say, oh, Canelo's a better boxer because he has better posture, because he throws, quote, unquote, straighter punches and this, this, and that. But that has nothing to do with actual boxing, you know. Those are your tools. And a lot of people think that those really flashy, athletic-looking fighters are the better boxers because they have that better, that more conventional boxing style, you know, but the fact that, that Vasily Lomachenko can go in there and feint and probe in 10 different ways to set up his punches, right, that's all to set up punches, you know, slipping to the inside, like I said, slipping to the outside, setting traps, right, so slipping to the inside and getting his opponent comfortable throwing jabs so that later he can slip to the inside, get his opponent to throw a jab and throw a right hand over the top or a left hand over the top, it's just beautiful boxing, you know, and that's that's real boxing. Boxing is not like throwing jabs and throwing straight right hands and throwing like, you know, your punches, you know, oh, rolling shots and this, is and that. It's the strategy of fighting. That's what boxing is. You know, you think about it in terms of like chess, right? You can know what all the pieces do, right? You might know, like, I don't know how to explain it the, in the most correct way with, with chess because whether you're good, whether you know what the pieces do or not, um, they all do the same thing for both opponents, for both players, right? But in boxing, it's not, it's not exactly like that, right? The pieces are your tools, right? So you need to take, you know, I don't know how to say it, you know, but like knowing what the pieces do is so different than knowing how to use them. And Canelo knows what all the pieces do, they do, right? He knows... Um, what his right hand is. He throws a great right hand. His great jab, right? Great left hook, great uppercut, great all these punches, great rolling, great slipping punches, great all that stuff, right? But when it comes to proactively setting up his offense, he's not even not even close to Vasily Lomachenko. Whereas conventional people think that Vasily Lomachenko, you know, might not be as good of a boxer because he's just like crafty or he's just this. But the real art in boxing is knowing what to do with all these pieces once you have them once they're refined once once your tools once you have a great right hand how you set that right hand up what it's it's just so much more than just throwing good punches anyway that's round one so far what we've learned about Vasily Lomachenko 
is that he has great offense and great defense. He's got great probes. He has a very, uh, a very proactive game plan. He's constantly testing and pressuring you. You know, he's constantly asking questions of Gary Russell Jr. What do you think about this? What do you think about that? What do you think about this? You know, giving him different looks, constantly making him readjust his game plan. And with that really active guard, whether or not Gary Russell Jr. throws a punch or not, he's not going to be in a position to get hit by it, right? And it's just just beautiful boxing. Anyway, this shouldn't have taken 45 goddamn minutes. And to be honest, I'm pretty lit right now. So I don't even know if what the fuck I said in this video makes any sense. Good luck, guys. Thanks.